Welcome back everyone, TC Tech Kelly here, and we're talking Pac-12 football once again today. Um, we are going to be looking in the North Division. Yesterday we looked at the South Division and just kind of looked at a couple storylines for each team, projected how they're going to do uh, throughout the 2013 season and their predictions for Week 1. And I just realized this earlier today that I didn't really talk about the games this weekend that much like I usually do uh, last season for the predictions. And I wanted to do that, but I just didn't think about it, so I'm not going to go back and do anything about it. I'll just let it slide this week, and then next week I will definitely talk about the games more in depth, um, and hopefully the games this weekend will give us something to talk about more in depth, such as weaknesses and strengths, um, instead of just predicted weaknesses and strengths. So let's start at the bottom of my power rankings per se uh, for the North Division. I'm going to go with WSU finishing last. They went three and nine last year. And how do they improve under a year two of Mike Leach? And they're just trying to get their air raid details down. I've heard they have a decent wide receiver core this year, um, so we we don't really they don't really have a big time target, but a, a lot of people that can contribute. Connor Holiday is a projected starter, and they didn't want to start. A freshman on the road in SEC territory, that is one reason, I believe. But I think they do like Connor Holiday. Uh, he looked pretty good in the Oregon game that I watched last year. Um, but again, they do go to SEC territory this weekend, and it's going to be a tough game for them. Uh, do they have a sleeper defense? ESPN reported that, or had an article on it that uh, kind of said that they might, and that is yet to be seen. I it's just hard to compete with the rest of a great offensive pack 12. I'm going to say they only pick up two wins this year, and I don't think they played Colorado. They missed Colorado, so that's an easy win that is off their uh, schedule. And they're going to need to win against Utah and California if they want to increase that win total. So 2-10 and ten for them in this year. Week 1, they play at Auburn. Auburn. <laughs> Uh, they, I, I'm predicting a 31-14 loss, so maybe keep it close for a quarter or two, but SEC team is going to pull away. At number five, I have California. They went 3-9 and nine last year and fired uh, Coach Tedford. They're fifth in the North Division. Sonny Dykes came from Louisiana Tech. How does he fare in his first season um, under the helm of California? They do have their bear raid offense, a little play on the air raid uh, offense. And he was the nation's, he led the nation's uh, top scoring offense in Louisiana Tech a year ago. Jeff, Jared Geoff it was named the starter in fall camp over Zach Klein, which many picked as the starter. Uh, on the defensive side, they're switching from a 3-4 to a 4-3. Um, like for WSU, the rest of the Pac-12 is going to be really tough, and so it's going to be hard for them to break out in a new coaching staff in 2013. I'm predicting a 4-8 and eight season, and they start um, with a week one game against number 22 Northwestern. And I'm going to say they'll lose that one, 27-13. Um, if it was maybe another team, I would say that coming to the West Coast for a late game would be a little tough. Uh, but it is Northwestern, and I think they will get the job done. Kind of one of the surprise teams from last year, hoping to carry that success into uh, this year. At number four, I have Oregon State. And that is a 9-4 team from last year, and they finished third in the North. Can they stay relevant in the nation this year? Last year they were a surprise team. Got up to the top 10 uh, middle of the year before being knocked off by Washington. Um, can they do it again? Can they kind of be a sleeper and float through their schedule and not get as much recognition or thought from teams? Definitely going to be harder considering last year's success. Uh, they have a little bit of a QB controversy. Sean Mannion and Cody Vaz. Uh, kind of traded starts last year depending on injuries and how well they were playing. Uh, but Sean Mannion was named the starter just last week. And so who knows how uh, how much of a leash he has on um, if he plays bad or whatnot. 
Storm Woods, can he eclipse the 1,000 yard mark? It's yet to be seen. He looks like a good back, but it was a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Sean Mannion kind of threw the ball around a lot last year, so if they can rely more on the running game, I think it will help their offense. Um, they're kind of built for that pro offense style anyway. I'm predict. I'm predicting a nine and three, a nine and three season from them, and hopefully go to a nice bowl game and get some revenge against the Big Twelve. Um, they play Eastern Washington this next weekend, and I think they're a formidable uh, opponent, uh, top 10 FCS team, but they'll still get the job done with a win, 45-17. to Now we move on to the top of the North Division, and at number three, I have Washington, and they went 7-6 and six last year, 7-6 and six the past three seasons. Can they, can they get past that seven-win mark? That's going to be tough once again. They got a tough schedule as well as playing in the Pac-12 North is tough in its own regards. They play on the road against uh, Stanford, UCLA, Arizona State, and Oregon State. So definitely tough. A couple of those are swing games, especially in the uh, cross-division games. Um, how is the defense under Wilcox? They had a great season last year compared to two years ago. Uh, in year two of Wilcox, Wilcox's defense they need to be able to step that up once again and at least stay at least in the higher end of the Pac-12 and they can be able to win some games with the offense they have another issue is the legal issues of the offseason Austin Severian Jenkins who also has an injury on his pinky he had surgery uh, just a couple weeks ago um, he had a DUI in the offseason as well as Kaysen Williams had a DUI misdemeanor um, no word on those guys if they're going to be suspended yet. Most of what we've heard is um, internally um, punished. But they are on the depth chart, I think. ASJ, as far as a couple days ago, he wasn't cleared to play because of his pinky for Boise State. So that's going to be a big loss for them if they don't have him on the field. Um, I believe Washington will get over that 7-win mark, and it might be a little bit optimistic, but a 9-3 and season is what I'm going to project, um, losing to Oregon, Stanford, and UCLA. And they play Week 1 in the new Husky Stadium with renovations uh, against 19th-ranked Boise State. I'm predicting a 31-21 upset, if you will. I'm pretty sure Vegas odds have Washington favored, but Boise State is ranked, so it will be an upset in those terms. Moving on to the top two teams, two national title contenders. First, well, second ranked, I'm predicting, is Oregon. They went 12-1 last year and finished second in the north. They are ranked number three in the AP poll. And what will the team be like without Chip Kelly? Mark Helfridge is the new head coach there. He was an offensive coordinator last year, so some things probably won't change. A lot of things probably won't change, as he's also stated that 95% of the philosophy will stay the same. So expect the same sort of offense, at least, from uh, the new head coach at Oregon. And then another storyline could be, will someone step up for Heisman? A little bit of talk last year with the Anthony Thomas, a little bit with Kenyon Barner, not as much. And then Marcus Mariota, uh, outstanding quarterback, really efficient, poised in the pocket, and great arm, great running. Didn't play much in the second half as the starters sat in like four or five games in the second half because they were just so far ahead of other teams. But will Mark Helfridge maybe let them play a little bit longer or who knows? Just get their stats to where they compare with other people around the nation playing the same amount of game time. One last thing is their kicking game. The kicking game hasn't been very good the past few years, but the uh, past kicker did graduate, and we got a new kicker here. So it might be settled. Well, that's one thing to keep an eye on. Can they rely more on their kicking game, um, especially late into games when things are close, and they definitely need it. Um, as far as, like, I think Auburn, the national title game, they had some kicking issues. I can't remember specifically what games, but uh, the pass kicker, he was okay, but wasn't very good at long range. 
I expect them to go 11 and 1 this year and finish second in the north. Um, hopefully a BCS bowl as well. And week one they play Nichols State, which Oregon State dominated last year, and Oregon is a little bit above them. Um, I'm predicting an 84 to 3 win over Nichols State, and that leads us to number one in the North this year, as well as last year, representing the uh, Pac-12 North in the championship game, as well as the Rose Bowl. Their 2012 record was 12 and 2, and that's going to be the Stanford Cardinal. They're number four in the AP poll. How does Hogan perform as full-time starter at quarterback? He was replaced. Uh, just after mid-year last year and led them to that uh, Rose Bowl victory over Wisconsin. They need to establish a group of wide receivers and tight ends. Both their tight ends last year went to the NFL draft early and their wide receiver core was never really established. They didn't have an ex outstanding wide receivers. Um, that's why they relied on the tight end so much. So someone needs to step up. They need to get more well-rounded. Um, give Kevin Hogan, Hogan some targets downfield. And can they handle national title, title contender expectations? I don't think they've ever been in this position before. Top five team going into the season. And I, I'm sure they don't want to be the USC of last year being ranked high and just completely dropping out. I do not think that will happen. They're just too well balanced too good defensively to uh, allow teams to beat them and hopefully this is going to be the pac 12 representative in the national title game if we get there i think they have the best chance of winning over an sec team over oregon um and just gives us our best our best chance to beat them out the only thing going against them is the pac 12 schedule and just teams kind of eating each other with the parity of the league I do think they go 12-0, and 0, though, and most likely go to that national title game. They have a bye in the first week, so no projections there, but they do play San Jose State in week two. But that is basically it. That is your Pac-12 North. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or want to submit your own rankings to me, leave me a comment below. Like and subscribe, and watch some games tonight. USC at Hawaii and Utah at utah state our games tonight both in the south division and then we finally get next week we have our first pac-12 game with usc and washington state so kick back watch some football and let's have a good opening weekend